after you do that, let's go into to, to the word of the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Uh, Here's the word of the Lord. And the Lord replied. <laughs> no, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> The, the Lord replied, don't say I'm too young for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. All right. And don't be afraid of the people for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out, touched my mouth, and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today, I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some, some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Now, here's the focus of scripture. Then the Lord said to me, Look, Jeremiah, what do you see? Year of exhibition, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I am watching and will certainly carry out all my plans. All right, yep, that's the end of scripture. So I want to um, share from this subject, can you see what I'm showing you? All right, we're going to talk talk through that. Lord, bless us now as we center around your word. Focus us, Lord God, as we receive what you have for us. We uh, expect a transfer from heaven into our spirit. We expect direction and instruction today. We need a word from you. So, God, we're not wasting our time as we sit here. And so remove any distractions so that we don't miss what you have for us. Anoint me, God. Anoint me to be in tune and in alignment with where you're going, how you're moving, what you're saying. Uh, so I'll be strategic, but most of all, I'll be accurate, Lord God. So only your anointing can bring me into that type of alignment so that when we leave this place, we have what we need to do better, be better, and live better. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Amen. You may take your seat in his presence. Can you see what I'm showing you? Can you see what I'm showing you? This is the year of what, class? The year of exhibition. God is going to show us some things. God is going to reveal to us some things. We're going to see some things that God is showing us. Um, how frustrating can it be when you try to point something out to someone and they just don't see it? You stress your points. You try to clarify. You try to rephrase. Um, you know, you lay out illustrations. <laughs> you use your hands. You raise your voice, you, you, you know, have tone inflections and all of that. You present it as clear as you can, and they still don't see it. They still don't see it. Um, my daughter walks in the room the other day, I'm in the office, and um, she, she asks me for something that's right there in front of her. Like, I'm busy. And for you to come in and ask me for something, means I got to stop what I'm doing to help you do what you're just too lazy to do, which is to see what's already there. Daddy, have you seen, and I forgot what she was asking me for, and I say, baby, it's right there in plain sight. I got to stop what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm venting. <laughs> just because you want me to point out to you something that's right there. I said, baby, it's right there. This was what frustrated me. She said, where? <laughs> it's right there. That, you know, at that point, I don't even want, listen, if you can't see it, you must don't want it bad enough. It's there, but you got to put some effort for you to see what's already there. And it made me realize that there are some things that many times are there, but we just don't see. We're missing it. Not because it's not available, 
because you just don't see it. We are declaring this to be the year of exhibition. Now watch this. This is the year God is going to exhibit, display things to us. He's going to show us some things, but it won't matter to any of us if we can't see what he's showing us. Nothing will exist to you. Check this point out. If you can't see it, nothing will exist to you if you can't see it. A lot of what you don't have is because you can't see it. It's not that it's not there. <laughs> It's just that you can't see it. And, and it was interesting this week. I'm, I'm going to pull this point from Jake's because he really dropped some nuggets this weekend. Um, when he took us back to creation and started to explain to us how God uh, created the earth. And uh, check this out. The first day, God says, let there be light. The subsequent days, he says, let the earth bring forth. First day is let there be light. The subsequent days are let the earth bring forth. And he tells us bring forth implies that there were the, the ingredients were already there. The ingredients were, were there to produce what he spoke. Follow me this morning. But he didn't bring forth until there was first light. Because you don't know what can be brought forth until you can first see what's there. And this is, this is even the process, he's saying, of how we change. Change is not necessarily external. When we want change in our lives, it's not necessarily external. It is internal. The frustration is you can't see what's already there for the change you're looking for. And he reminds us that you have everything that you need already inside you. You just can't see it. So when you go to therapy, the therapist is not giving you something new. They're just helping you to discover what's... They, they want to bring light to what you... And the, the frustration is you haven't discovered it. And so you think you don't have it. And all they're doing is giving you lines of questioning that's adding light to what you are not obviously looking at. And by the time a successful therapist, what they have done is uncovered what you were missing. And that is where we are, believers, is that when we need something from God, contrary to popular belief, we think that is something always that he's given to us. But the reality is there are many things that God says it's already there. And you're asking me for something that you don't need me to give you. You just need to see it. So so I got to ask God to open the eyes of my understanding. And the scriptures remind us that he has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge. Oh, I have everything, but there is knowledge, illumination. I have everything I need to be successful, to be happy, to be peaceful, to be joyful. Even when other folk don't give me what I need, I still can find the peace that I need. I still can find the joy. I don't need anybody else to give me another thing for me to be balanced in who I am. Why? Because God created me with everything I already need on the inside of me now you might not understand that but that's why people can be sustained even when their supervisors their job is tripping they don't have all the money that they think they need but they still survive they still happy they still center because they realize that even though my, what my world looks like around me might not supply what I have I have everything I still need on the inside of me God has shown me that he's still my provider he's still my way maker and he and it's not so much of me saying and God let them give me what I need but let but God show me what I already have yeah. that, that, that's the point I want to make we this year we have to go to God and say Lord help me to discover what you already gave me yeah. 
what do I already have? I'm going to walk this thing through because I feel it. I feel this. I, I wrestle with the Lord. What do I already have? Tell somebody you got more than you think. And you're looking externally, but God is saying, no, you don't have to look externally. You already have what you need for victory in your life. You already have what you need to be successful. It's 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 only you now. Now you have to bring light to it and you can move once I show you what it is. But what you have is not as small as you think it is. What, what you have is not as significant, insignificant as you think it is. David, you have enough with five stones. Moses, what do you have in your hand? Woman, you come into me with your sons because, you know, they're about to put you and your sons out. But what do you have in your home? Can I ask you a question? Maybe the reason why God is not allowing folk to give you what they owe you is because he wants to show you you already have what you need. And if I keep allowing you to always be dependent on what you think you need from them, then you will always be thirsty for their support. And I want to show you that even when they don't give you the support, you can say, that's all right. That's all right. That's, a, that's between you and God. God's still going to take care of me. That I don't have to feel insignificant because I'm waiting on you to pay me back for something you owe me. If you never give me anything else, I ain't going to lose sleep over it because I serve a God who is my provider. He is the Alpha and and the Omega and greater is he that is it that's why I ain't got the trip on anything that's around me because greater is he that is in me than he oh y'all missed it right here y'all please don't take this as a simple word I said greater is he that is in wrong class I said greater did y'all hear that so I'm looking for Uncle Billy to pay me back the five ten dollars that he owed me and greater is in me than he that is in the world and sometimes God will step back and keep you preoccupied looking for a source that's limited until you can discover the source that's always been in you that's unlimited. And so when we come to church, please understand this is not a ceremony. This is the place where God shines light on you to show you what's there. To show you that despite what you went through this week, you still the head and not the tail. To, to show you that despite what you think you're limited in, hallelujah, you got more and you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Somebody needs this this week because you're about to go back into a week and the enemy's been lying to you thinking that you're restricted and limited this week. I dare you to put your hand on yourself and tell the devil you can't rob me of nothing because everything I need is already in me. I, I'm going to stop focusing on what I believe the world owes me and I'm going to start discovering what I got already. Is there anybody in here that has come to the point where you tired of relying on everybody else and you just got to the point if I'm going to be successful I got to make this thing happen myself I'm going to kill Goliath even when the army around me say Goliath can't be killed okay let me put it in your real life I'm going to wake y'all up soon I'm going to get my degree even when they say I ain't got the financial assistance because I got the God watch this that can give it back to me in good measure pressed down shaking together y'all going to make me work I work running over watch this and when financial aid said they weren't going to give it to me greater is in me he got people that will give to my bosom that's the kind of God that I serve I need folk that are, are accepting the fact that this is the year folk going to look at you and thought you needed them to be successful and you going to show them now it was already in me in fact the best thing that ever happened to me was that you walked out on my life you you told me no the, the best thing that ever happened to me was that you said that you didn't want to give me nothing because that forced me to discover what God placed on the inside uh, can we give God praise right now because you recognize that God shut some things down so that he can show what I already had on the inside of because you said no I can finally get to the place where I can see what God was trying to show me I can finally see what he showed me. And that's where we're going today. I believe in the text, that's what God is doing to Jeremiah. He's saying, Jeremiah, can you see what I'm trying to show you? He's taking Jeremiah through this process 
of getting his vision together. Because you can't claim this to be the year of exhibition if you can't see right. If your spiritual eyes cock eye. You got lazy vision. You can't you ain't going to see it correctly if your vision ain't sweet. I said at eight o'clock, everybody, we can we can declare our request to the Lord just as plain and clear. But the reality is, can you see what he's showing you that's already there? And he's saying, Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had something that I was displaying. This this was displayed before you got here. Woo! It was already there. It's just that in this moment, I got to get you to see what's already been there. And so there's, some, there's four things that I believe this, this year, please don't miss this. This is my objective today. There are four areas that I believe God needs us to see what he's showing us. And the reality is, it is not him showing us cars and houses. That's coming. Thank God. I know y'all want to celebrate on that. I'm not taking away your blessing. I know. But but beyond all of that, I'm talking about some mature believers who realize that this year of exhibition will mean nothing. If if I get a car in the house, that will mean nothing if I can't get the spiritual foundation, the character, the personality, the discipline, the strategy, hallelujah, the integrity, hallelujah, the worship life, the prayer life, y'all missing me, to the anointing that's going to help me not sabotage what God blesses me. I'm not, I ain't talking to everybody because we can dance off of houses and money and all, but is there anybody in here that says, Lord, build the foundation in me because I don't want to be a success on Friday and then by May, hallelujah, I become a failure because I didn't have the foundation because what profits a man to gain the whole world? And he has to lose his. Tell somebody it's deeper to me than that. What I need don't come with receipts. What I need is God to search the inside of me and build some fortitude on it. I lost the room right there. I guess, I guess, is there anybody in here that has the year? God, show me how to be a better believer. Huh? Show me how to be a better worshiper. Show me. Oh, I don't like that type of word. Show me how to be anointed this year. Show me how to lay hands on the sick and watch the sick recover. Lord, show me how to be disciplined in my family. Finances. Show me how to be a consistent giver. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Show me how to worship you like I've lost my mind. Show me how to say amen when I don't need a cheerleader to prompt me. To say, show me how to worship you in spirit and in truth. I need, I need some stuff that ain't surface. And I believe there's four things. We're going to go deep there. There's four things I believe God wants us to look for he wants us to see what he's showing us number one number one he wants us to see this is what you're going to have to do this year you're going to have to learn how to see what he's showing you personally nothing else will matter unless and i believe this text sets it up real real great for us nothing else will matter he will show you a whole bunch of stuff but you will sabotage it if you don't care if you don't um see what he's showing you in these four areas number one you have to see what he's showing you personally what do you mean by that you notice in the verse when god comes to jeremiah the lord replied he told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, he tells him all that. I appointed you, did all this. And Jeremiah, you know what he said to God? I'm too young. He showed God, he told God how he saw himself. Hmm. I'm cute this up here. Show God, oh Jesus. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. he says Jeremiah I heard what you said but I got news for you you're wrong this this year watch this you've got to learn how to see what God is showing you Jeremiah you said you're too young but Jeremiah you're wrong Don't, don't say that you're too young And this is what's crazy about Jeremiah. Jeremiah, when it comes to how the standard has been set for prophets, he really is too young. (laughs) When it comes to his peers, 
He really is different. He, he sees himself based upon how they set the standard. And when he goes by how they set the standard, he has limited himself. God tells Jeremiah, you're in a class of your own. And the problem is you still try to see yourself based upon what they say you are. Ooh, I'm talking to myself in here. You, you are seeing yourself, your personal self, the way they have set the standard. And the reality is they don't set the standard for what I've called in your life. You don't measure up when it compares to what they have a system that you are not a part of when it comes to what you qualify for. Yes, Jesus, I hear you. you yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't look for your approval from people because you are better than what they say you are. So don't just don't don't see yourself the way they see you. Just because you ain't got no money in the bank don't mean you broke. Oh, y'all don't like me in here. J just, just because you ain't got the skills that the job is asking for don't mean that you still can't get the job. See, your neighbor being quiet right there because they don't want you to know that the reason they got the job is because they didn't have the skills. But they had favor. They don't want you. They don't want you to. They don't want you to call HR on them. That's why they quiet right now. Because they they don't want you to know that I've been in this job for years now, and I didn't have the qualifications. But I need somebody in here to give God glory and let the devil be a liar. That you know you walking into some stuff right now. I need you to testify to somebody with your worship that you walking into stuff right now that you had to see yourself personally. God did something for me that doesn't even fit how other people say I qualify for. And this is your year. Watch this. God told me to tell you this is the year where you've got to discover who God says you are. You've got to start seeing what God says you are. I hope y'all not missing this. You've got to start. Y'all been researching everything else, researching your career, researching other people's stuff. You on Facebook, you know everybody else's background, everybody else's proficiency. God says this is the year where you've got to find out who you are this year. Who, what's your personality? What's your preference? Because the reason why you're so confused and you're doing everything that you just feel like doing and nothing is sticking is because you don't know who you are. Jeremiah, we supposed to have been prophesying years ago, but you thought you were too young. And God has to come now and arrest you and say, stop doing what you're doing. You've got to start doing what you've been called to do. And the reason why you're not doing what you're called to do is because you don't know who you are. You keep saying you're too young. You keep saying you don't have enough education for that. You keep saying, don't you know what family I came from, what side of the tracks I grew up on? And you are not saying what God says you are. But I need a believer in here that will tell the devil, you got me for the last time. I'm going to start. Okay, maybe I just got to remind you who you are. I done peaked your resume. I know. I, I peaked your personality sheet. And it's in the word of the Lord. Can I give you a heads up of who you are? The scripture says you are the head and not, you didn't know that? And not the, t I don't care who rejected you. The, the scripture scripture said that not one weapon formed against you will prosper the scripture says hallelujah that, that that god will cause you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper the scripture says that you can do all things hallelujah through christ who strengthens you i can't believe nobody y'all don't read our word i need a person in the room to get on your feet and say you know what i'm better than what they say i am because i'm no longer following what they say i'm gonna follow what god says about me and if you know what God says about me is better than what the world is saying. I need you to rejoice because you realize my personality comes from God. So, um, Jeremiah, this is what I need you to see. Yourself. This is, what, this is what I need you to walk into this year. Ooh, yourself. 
Last year, you were somebody else. The year before, you were somebody else. The year before that, you were this person. You took on this personality, that person. This year, I dare you to put your hand on yourself. I'm going to be myself this year. I'm going to be who I don't care who don't like me. In fact, my circle been frustrating me anyway. You know why? Because you've been somebody you weren't supposed to be. Won't you stand up and be who you are? God, God said, be yourself. Oh, Jesus. I feel free right there. Be, be yourself. That, that, that's why I look at the faces out there and I'm just as loud as I want to. I'm having a good time. I, I don't even know if this is a good word for you, but it sure feel good to me. You know why? Because this is my, at the end of the day, I got to go before God and say, Lord, I'm here to please people. I was just trying to be who you called me. I, it gets exhausting trying to always please people and put on a face for everybody else. You know what's free is even if you don't accept me, I'm going to still be myself. I'm going to be I'm going to be myself. Who who told you? Who told you that? Who told you you were too young? Jeremiah stop. Who to, who told you? Let, let me let me show you what you're really capable. And, and this is the next thing that we got to go into because what you see this year will be impacted by how you see yourself. I just said something real deep right there. What you see this year, will it, be, it will be impacted by how you see yourself. God can show you something great, children of Israel, a promised land flowing with milk and honey. But if you only see yourself as a grasshopper, you're going to stay in the wilderness because I'm showing you the promise, but all you see is a limited you. And you're talking yourself out of something that God says you deserve. Who told you that you're supposed to stay in the wilderness? Who, who told you that a nine to five was all you were called to work? <laughs> Who, t who told you that? Who? In fact, he don't say. He don't ask. He says, "Don't say that no more, Jeremiah." He, he says, "Don't, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't, don't speak that over you because you keep speaking it over you. You gonna forfeit what I'm trying to show you. Stop! I dare you to tell yourself, stop speaking it. I, I, I silence every tongue that's been speaking against your character, your personality, anything that's been trying to convince you otherwise of you being successful. I come against in the name of Jesus, and I'm giving you something that you got to start doing in your prayer time. You got to silence critics. You got to silence doubters. You got to shut. You got to tell the devil, shut up. Shut, that that ain't me. I'm shut. Up. I am victorious. Shut. shut Y'all don't talk to the devil like maybe I need to get victory this year you get out of my ear get out of my spirit i'm only gonna follow what god tells me to do don't say that no more don't don't say that god god is like your parent pop you in the mouth don't say that no more Th this is the year god's got to be real bold with you don't you say that you got to start saying what god says about you you ready to go deeper? Not, not only do I have to see what he's showing me personally, but I got to see what he's showing me. I mean, yeah, personally, I got to see what he's showing me purposely. Because after he tells Jeremiah, don't say that you're young, he begins to tell Jeremiah. No, 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 not, not verse 12. Let's go to verse, uh, verse 8. And, 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 and uh, go verse 7. I'm sorry. He says, uh, don't say I'm too young for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. Keep going. Watch this. You think you're young, but I want to tell you, don't be afraid of the people for I'm going to be, I'm going to be with you and I will protect you. I, the Lord have spoken. You downplaying yourself, but I, the Lord giving you some re reinforcement. Watch this for who you are and watch this. This and this is what you're going to do, Jeremiah. You thought you were young, but this is why you can't see yourself young. Verse nine, you can't see yourself young because then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I have put my words in your mouth. Verse 10 today. You think you young, 
but you're appointed. And not just appointed for anything. Watch this. You're appointed to stand against nations and kingdoms. This is your purpose right here. Do you know what? The reason why you have been saying you are young because you have forgotten that your purpose is not to speak what you feel about yourself your purpose is to speak what God has placed in your mouth to speak do you know that your purpose is to do what God has called you to do is to go where God has called you to go is to say where God has called you what God has called you to say and many of us are lost and not having direction and frustrated in the areas of our lives because we are not following the purpose that God has called us to do this is the season where you've got to bring your life into alignment to do what God is saying to for you to do the reason why you're seem you seem that you feel like you're insignificant is because you're not doing what God has called you to do Jeremiah here's your purpose go where I tell you to go say what I tell you to say but God they not gonna receive me your purpose is not to receive approval from people whoa that's over your head you know why you frustrated why we frustrated I got to put myself in there you know why we frustrated because we think that the goal of life is to get likes on Facebook it's to get people to like us it's to get people to validate because we think if you validate who I am, then I must be functioning in my purpose. And the reality is people's validation, people's approval of you does not, does not validate your purpose. What validates your purpose is whether you are doing what God told you to do or not. Bottom line, whether people like you or not, y'all ain't saying it, whether people follow you or not, at the end of the day, you got to stand before God and say, God, I did what you called me to do because that is, y'all forgot that. You know why? Because we live in this life where we want God, we, we want to do what we want to do. I want people to like me. And God is saying, did you forget? I didn't save you for folk to like me. If they didn't like me, hallelujah. Why do you, oh, let me take y'all back to the scriptures. He said, if they came against me, if they were after me, if they criticize me, if they persecuted me, then what do you think they gonna do to you? Oh, I messed the room up. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I just bust your bubble because I thought you probably thought that you only signed up to be a Christian so that God can put you on the mountaintop and for you to have sunny days all day long. But I'm here to tell you that as soon as you signed up to be a believer, God says, now you mine. And Paul says that we are, watch this, that, that, that we are, uh, um, oh my God, that we are crucified. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We're Christ hallelujah which means the life that I now live is not my own but I've been bought with a price and so my purpose now is to be used for his glory that's my purpose so here's a hard question when you look at what you're doing even right now in 2020 are you doing what he called you to do and this is what God wants to show you your purpose you need to start spending time this year and say, God, show me what my purpose is. Show me what I've been called to do. How am I supposed, what is my role? What is my assignment? Oh, I lost. Yeah, I know. I know. This, this is one of them sobering words because I, I want to tell you that all you got to do is stand up, turn around seven times and you're going to get favor and all this other stuff. But 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 before you can really uh, um, um, manage and steward the favor, you got to know what it's for. God ain't blessing you with cars just so that you can have a car in your driveway. There's a purpose for it. God, God, God is not going to give you anything that doesn't fit your purpose. That's why he ain't give you the boo that you've been asking for. Because it doesn't fit your, if you knew what your purpose was, you knew that boo don't fit my purpose. And you frustrating, frustrating, asking God for stuff that don't fit with your car. Have you ever gone to somebody's house and you ask them for a knife, Minister Niger, and when they give you the knife, it's all bent? Dinked, bent up, scratched up. You, you know why it's in that condition? Because they didn't use it the correct way. It, 
it's taken all of those hits. They've been using it as a screwdriver. They've been using it to pry stuff up. Because anytime you don't know your purpose, you will always go through abuse. Yeah, in, anytime you don't know your purpose, you will always go through abuse. And so we got the body of Christ that has a bunch of scars and all these bruises and bents on our self-esteem and our spirit. You know why? Because you're not being used according to your purpose. Some of the frustration you can eliminate when you find out what you were created for. You know why you frustrated on your job? Because that won't the job for you anyway. When you know your purpose, you'll be in a better place. You will avoid a whole lot of misuse and abuse. Some of us are taking treatment we were never designed to take because we are misplaced right now. So this year, God say, I ain't showing you nothing else until you find out what your purpose is. So you got to show, you got to see what he's showing you personally. You got to see what he's showing you purposely. You got to see what he's showing you prophetically. Y'all ready for this? And the Lord said, um, the Lord says, that's right. No, no, go to verse. I'm sorry. I gave you the wrong verse. Go to, go to the previous verse. Yeah. Then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, <laughs> uh-huh. I see a branch from an almond tree. And then God says that I'm watching and will carry out all my plans. All right. He says, that's right. And it means that I'm watching and will certainly carry out all my plans. Jeremiah, if you just see it, I said at eight o'clock service, if you just see an almond tree, you're missing it. If you just seeing the branch of an almond tree, you're missing it. This is why we said earlier, you've got to see deeper. Not just deeper, but specifically, you've got to see what God is showing you prophetically. I'm going to let y'all write it down. This is something I need y'all to catch today. You have to see what God is showing you prophetically. This is why God says, from what I just showed you, Jeremiah, it is confirmation that I am going to, that I will carry out all my plans. God says, whatever I show you this year, you have to see it as it is already done. I know, I know. We're going we're to we're work it because y'all always make me work. That's fine. Y'all always do. 10 o'clock makes me work. That's fine. I'll work. He says, what I'm showing you, Jeremiah, you have to see it. This is the interpretation. What you're seeing, what I'm showing you must confirm for you that I, what I'm doing is already done. What God shows you this year, you can't wait until it happens for you to receive it. You can't wait until it happens for you to validate it. Missing it. You've got to see prophetically this year. When God shows it to you, you don't have to wait until it happens to celebrate because God says whatever I show you is confirmation that it's already done. You're here. I got you. Okay. I think in church we, we, we do a disconnection because you think I'm talking to your neighbor. Here's what I just said. Everything that God has shown you, you have to see it as it's already wrong class i'm gonna keep plowing 
Let me bring you back to your prayer time. And I know when he showed it to you, it seemed bigger than what you thought you could handle. As big as it is, God says, don't see it as a suggestion. It's not an implication. It is confirmation that it's all the way I showed you your children are going to be. You got to see it as it's all the way I show you your health is going to be. You got to see it. I showed you your money. I showed you your business. Whatever I showed your anointing to be. God says stop looking at it as if it's a wish that you just you know I pulled it out the air no you got to see it as it's already okay y'all okay I guess that, that's why when we come to church nobody needs to pump you up because when you come in here you should be reminded of what he saw you and if you can see it prophetically then you ain't got to wait until it, it happens for you to shout you got to shout before it happens because that's how you show God I'm looking at it prophetically you got to prepare and get ready right now for what's about to manifest because that's how you look at stuff prophetically I go back to this all the time Elijah looked at the cloud that looked like the size of a man's hand when he had prayed for rain and everybody was looking for this mass manifestation of a storm and all Elijah saw was the cloud the size of a man's hand and he be, he ran with it he he outran the chariots because all he had to see was what God showed him but he saw it prophetically I need somebody in the room that said I don't need to wait until the battle is over I see my victory right now I, I need somebody to step into 2000 December the 31st 2020 and I need you to rejoice like the last day of this year has already manifested what you've been praying for. I need you to bless God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Remind the devil that I'm not looking at it right now. I see myself in the future and I look much better than I do right now. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe that help. You got to understand the significance of the almond tree because the almond tree does not produce like other trees. There's a reason why God shows Jeremiah this almond, the branch of an almond tree, because the almond tree doesn't produce on the same time schedule as other trees. If you do research, trees are supposed to produce their fruit typically in the spring. Not the almond tree. It's as if the almond tree didn't get the memo that it doesn't have to wait at the same time everybody else waits to perform, to manifest its fruits. And so what, what research would tell you is that the almond tree will produce in the late part of winter while all the other trees are dormant like the people in your row. The, the almond tree is producing the fruit of what it was made for and so while they ain't producing nothing the almond tree says I can bring my spring into my winter and ain't got to wait like everybody else I'm gonna produce right now I, I need somebody to be prophetic in the room and don't, don't worry about the trees that's dormant right now I need some almond trees to reach out and say Lord I'm gonna produce my my praise right now I, I'm gonna produce hallelujah my worship right now I'm gonna produce my dance right now because I believe I ain't got to wait as long as everybody had to wait when God will make it wait other people that was gonna take years for it to produce God says it's going to manifest for me right now because he's showing me the branch of an almond tree when it comes to my business, when it comes to my health, when it comes to my children. I see God doing, I dare you to shout right now. Can you see it? Can, can you see it? Can, can, can you see it? They told you you were going to have to wait to fall, but God said, no, nah, you ain't got to wait to fall because you got to see it prophetically. You can see it right now. I'm healed right now. That's why the scripture says, now let the weak say, I am strong. Let, let the poor say, I am weak. Can you make the devil real mad and start declaring stuff that he can't even see yet? Can you start declaring to the enemy, I am healed. I am wealthy. I am above and not beneath. I'm better than where I was because I see it prophetically here's the last one 
You got to see it prophetically. Here's the last one. You got to see provisionally. Here's the last one. We're going home. So not only this year, I got to learn how to see prophetically. Lastly, I got to learn how to see provisionally. Then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? Let's go to verse 12. And the Lord said, that's right. It means that I am. I ain't even got to say anything else. That, that's right. And it means what I show you. Please understand that it means I am. You're not going to do it on your own. This is the year where you stop looking at what you don't have. When you stop focusing your attention on who left you and what, you, what, what, what they left you with and, and the resources you don't have, this is the year you stop looking at what causes you to complain. God, I feel you. This is the year you got to be discriminatory in what you look and how you look at things. You, you got to be prejudiced in what you look. I'm not no longer looking at what I don't have. I got to look at the fact that what God shows me, it comes with an insurance plan that he says I got to insure a you that I am going to personally watch over what I showed you to make sure that it comes to pass so for the three people that's in the room that know hallelujah what God showed you you don't even have the resources for you ain't got the time for you ain't got the ability for you ain't got the skills for God says the way I need you to see it is not by what you don't have but I need you to see it like David when he went up against Goliath he says I know you come at me with sword and spear but I come at you with hallelujah the name of the Lord of hosts I got more with me than you got in front of you and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I need believers in this room to say this is the year that I believe that hallelujah that he's more than the world against me that if God be for me who can be against me God says I am gonna open doors for you I am hallelujah gonna give you what they said you needed from them I'm gonna be your provider I'm gonna be your healer I'm going to be your way maker. I'm going to be your lily in the valley. I'm going to be your bright and morning star. I'm going to be your peace. I'm going to be your joy. And the joy that I give you can come from the world. And they can't take it away from you because that's who I'm going to be for you. Don't miss it. I got excited. Don't miss it. Because this is the year that when they walk out, watch this. You get blind to it. Because I don't even see that as a loss. Y'all missing it. Because the reality is, yeah, they did, lo- they did walk out. But it still don't mean that's a loss. I saw a post the other day. They said, if you, if you walking out means that I still have my peace, then I didn't lose nothing. And I can't see just because I don't have it as a loss. This is the year I'm not going to give the enemy any glory for what he's trying to remove out of my life. Because I got a God that says it don't matter what you don't have I am oh I gotta take y'all I wish y'all would read y'all scripture because we would be dancing around do y'all remember what the I am term even who can I preach to this do do y'all remember when he said I am that that was when Moses went to God and said God I'm going to do something that's too great for me I I don't have the skills for it Lord I I stutter I I don't have the skills I can't speak but and and they're not even gonna believe me who who do I who who, 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 who am I going to tell financial aid who sent me? Who, who am I going to tell the doctor who sent me? Who, who am I going to tell my critics? And God says, I got a name for it. I, let, let, let me help you. I got a term for it. What, what's the name? I am that I, devil, you, you picked the wrong person. Because whatever you moved out of my life just gave me more room for the I am to come in and be everything that I, can I get a worshiper in the room just to bless the I am that I am. He is you. 
Yahweh. He is El Shaddai. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Sit to do. I need somebody to worship the God who says, I am everything that you need me. Stand. I gave you the best I had this morning. I gave, gave you the best. I, 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 I am. You will lose your mind if you keep being preoccupied with the stuff that you lost. The stuff that left you, Jesus. Trust me, you're going to lose your mind if you keep dwelling on things that left you. People who left you, God said, don't worry. That ain't a loss. Are y'all hearing me? I know I'm only talking to folk that can, that can see this. If you still want to waddle, I feel like George Myers. If you want to waddle in your pity party, you can do that. But watch this. I keep telling my daughters, crying doesn't help you recover. Now, it'll get you. You can get all the emotions out. That's cool. Do that. I, who was it? Sister Andrea said you get a day, you get two at the most. But 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 at the, at the end of two days, you're going to have to get up, dry them tears. I know y'all don't like it. And you got to start moving forward. You... You, you, we, we got movement. Just because they took something from you don't mean your destiny stopped right there. And I refuse to give the enemy any satisfaction that just because you thought you took something from me that I was going to stop right here. Nah, it may have caused me to take a break for a moment, but I'm going to still move. I'm still moving forward. Any forward movers in the room? Are there any people in the room that says, you know what, I lost some stuff, but I'm still moving forward. In fact, I want some folk in the room that say, you see, you looking at somebody. Don't let my success fool you. I made it when they walked out on me. I, I made it even though I didn't have the money in the bank. I made it even when I didn't have the qualifications. You looking at somebody that survived some losses. And I'm a living witness that if you continue to see what you have, over what you lost, you'll move forward.